Good morning. It's Wednesday, a little later. I had to set up a new computer this morning. So let's jump into 2 Corinthians 6, 6 through, what, 12, 13. Paul's kind of bearing his heart to the Corinthians, and he's saying, guys, you know, I, I, I want you to listen to what I have to say, and I feel like you can follow my example of how I'm living. And there's a couple of things that he points out right there. If you look at the email, I underlined a few things and put them in bold, but he goes through kind of the everyday life, but more importantly, the attitude at which you face that life. You know, in these crazy times that we find ourselves right now, you're at home listening to devotions instead of in the whole mech room at school. And we, you know, are wondering, well, when are we going in? And most of us probably at least listen to the news every once in a while. And back in the days of Paul and the Corinthians, they didn't have the news. They had... Uh, live their lives on word of mouth and things traveled. And so Paul writes a letter to say, look, this is how you live your life. You see the contrast, the, the two different ways of living. We do have those letters and we have things written down, but we also have this constant barrage of stuff coming at us from people that are trying to make money. One of the most interesting things I see here is Paul says, Look, we're dying, but we live on. You know, we, we, <clears throat> we're, we're poor, yet we're making many rich. We're sorrowful, but we're always rejoicing. We have nothing, and yet we possess everything. What? What in the world is he saying? In Isaiah chapter 55, <clears throat> Isaiah says, God's ways and our ways are so different. The way you think is not the way God thinks. And the way God thinks is not the way you think. But I want you to realize, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So that's the way we're supposed to think. So we look at Paul's example and we look at the real world in which we live today. And he says, dying, yet we live on. Here's what I think. Here's why I think the mass hysteria over the coronavirus Yes, there are going to be people that are dying. I heard today Prince Charles has it and Tom Hanks has had it. What What's up with these? I thought they were immune from that kind of stuff. Now, it's appointed unto man wants to die. And once we face our mortality and realize this world in our home and we come to grips with that, the hysteria over death kind of fades. There's always the fear of the unknown. That's the big deal about the coronavirus. Nobody knows. We just wish somebody would tell us what's going to happen. And yet the attitude with which we face it, and I think the vast majority of the people in the media, that all they're worried about is that first part that Paul mentions in, in this passage, they dying, they're scared to death to die because they have no hope. Paul says, yes, we're actually wasting away every day, and yet we live on. We are uncertain about the whole economy. It looks like, you know, God's going to take care of a lot of people through our government by getting stimulus checks. But Paul says, I have nothing, and yet I possess everything. You know, he said, I'm sorrowful, yet I'm always rejoicing. Wow. If we could take that attitude and get our hope from that, realizing, yes, there are going to be people that are dying. It may be me. It may be you. But we live on. We live for eternity. And we've got to keep that great, blessed hope in mind. And that gets us through times of crisis, whether it be war or pestilence. I do know people that just sit in fear. They are so scared to go outside. They wouldn't even think of exposing themselves to the birds in the air. Well, something might happen. Paul doesn't say live your life like that. He says realize who you are, but realize where you're going and what's already happening. We're being renewed every day. I mentioned yesterday we have a treasure inside of us. And if God's provided that, my goodness, 
We have a reason to live, to bring honor and glory to him. And you, even more important, in this time of crisis, are providing hope to young people by providing amazing lessons. Y'all need to watch Shirley Renfro's lesson on Paul Gauguin. She did a great job of re reaching it from a different perspective. And, you know, it was interesting. Hey, you're doing a good job. Have the perspective today that, you know what? It's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. If you can come to grips with that, the coronavirus isn't going to scare you, neither is anything else. You're going to live because God has promised that we're going to live just as long as he's planned for us. Who, by thinking about it, can add one minute to your life? God, according to Job, has numbered our days, and we're going to live as long as he has planned for us to live. That ought to encourage us realizing he has a plan for you.